There we are. Hello, good morning. Welcome, welcome to Tuesday, October 8th, 2024. Pastor Tim Marvel, you're watching Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions. That's a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church where I am honored um, to be uh, the pastor there. And we get together live on our Facebook page most Mondays through Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. for about a half an hour, and uh, we talk. Well, many people use it as a good morning and a hello. and uh, But we also just kind of talk about the news of the church, news of the world, but looking at it with Christian viewpoints. And then we have four pieces of scripture that we'll read together, a little bit of commentary. Um, and the commentary is just designed to make us think about how I read these words and how what does it mean to me? Uh, how can I apply this in my life? Um, or do I know anything like this? Where can, what can I learn from this, this inquisitive reading of the Bible that we always encourage? And then we'll finish it with prayer. So if you have a prayer request, there's two things. Number one, if you're live with us, put it in that comment section. Well, just put something in the comment section anyway, regardless, just so we know that you're there. Um, and uh, I'll go back and harvest that before we pray, and, uh, and then we'll finish that. Also, now, look, we're a pretty busy church. There's a lot going on, and if you want to know what's going on, the best way to do it is go to our website, which is www.allenparkcom. Prez, P R E S dot org, Allen Park Prez dot org. And there, uh, it's a very uh, functional and uh, very uh, fresh website that Carrie Van uh, keeps, keeps up for us. And uh, she, so if you have any questions, there's contact, ways to contact us. On that home page, you'll see a picture of me. Uh, holding a child that we were about to baptize, or maybe perhaps we just did baptize. And um, But at regardless, go look over to the right side of that. You'll see a big and blue, big prayer. That's a highlighted link. If you click on that, it'll bring up a form. You can fill up as much or as little information as you'd like, and it'll come to me and to me alone. And I do pray for you as soon as that comes. So there we are. Um, I very much believe in the power of prayer and uh, praying for the world. Now, news that's going on. Let me just go down and say hello to some folks first before we get in. Oh, and, and uh, Carrie is with us, and she's putting links in down, the, down in the comments. That's great. Hey, Barry and Margo, good morning to you. Hi, Judy. It's Norma's birthday. It's Norma Bentley's birthday, really. And Keith Provo also. Wow. All right. Happy birthday to both Norma and Keith. Good to see you. Hi, Judy Hatch. Good morning to you. Judy, thank you for the card. It was a beautiful card. Hi, Sherry. And uh, is Norma with us? There she is, the birthday girl. Hi, Norma Bentley. Norma and um, uh, Carrie uh, are our leaders for our grief share, which meets on Wednesday. And uh, so they really are ministering to people's needs. Sandy is with us. Suzanne Maxey, good morning. Welcome to you. All right, so we do have some folks. We moved from 9 to 9.30, and I think that's been good. We have actually had some folks that have joined us that haven't necessarily been able to do it because uh, at 9, so, uh, and we still have strong viewership, so that was a good thing to do. That was a good decision. News of the world. Well, you know me. I'm going to always pray for peace. Because, you know, if you don't want it, you're never going to achieve it. So um, so that's a big prayer of mine, of course. And, um, you know, I, I just, um, I struggle at this point in my faith. This is where I share with you, I, in my faith. Um, say, and, and what I realize is that I get frustrated. I'm like, well, you know, hey, God, if you're real, why aren't you doing something about this? And um, and then I realized, well, we should be doing something about this. And uh, uh, you know, I, then I get, I feel like, well, you know, how long, Lord? How long? 
and that's a common refrain that we see. We'll even we'll even see it in the in the, our re readings today. This, Lord, how long, Lord? We're just in this period of anxious waiting, and uh, because we want things to be right, we do seek the kingdom, right? But we gotta seek the kingdom for what? For God's sake, right? Not for us. So I mean, if if uh, uh, embracing the ideals of the kingdom led to additional power uh, for uh, so many leaders in our world, um, you'd see them jump up, jump on that thing right away because it's about power. But that's but the desire to have that power over everybody, that's evil too. So yeah, we just need to. You know, and, and I'm not in pain over it. I just, I just, I long for it. I long for peace. I long for peace. And then closer to home, well, we continue to pray for those who are sick and uh, give thanks for those who are recovering. But we also know that there's some folks uh, who are nearing their end of their time here. And I pray that their time will be comforted, right? And, uh, and that they'll, they won't be alone. So those are the things that uh, I pray for. All right. Hello, Kim. Good morning to you. All right, here we go. I'm going to go over here to the Presbyterian mission. Oh, wait a second. I got to go over here because there's so many things I can do. If I go over to that Allen Park Presbyterian Church, to that home button, and then go down about four spaces, calendars and feeds, I can pull that up. And then right in front of me is this great calendar about everything that's going on within the church, Allen Park Presbyterian Church. However, we also need to, you need to know that it's not just limited to us because we are, um, you know, we, have, we are actually making sure that we list all of our sister Presbyterian churches in the Downriver area, their events. And we've actually had some people go to some of them and we have encouraged all of us to do that as it becomes, as you can do it, right? Uh, I will tell you this much. Visiting one of our other Presbyterian churches at their event and then identifying yourself as somebody from Allen Park and that you're coming, the welcome that they give you is unbelievable. It really is. Um, they just, uh, they're just they they're so thankful to know that there's brothers and sisters in spirit. And we feel the same way when they come here. So um, please, 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 um, uh, let's support uh, the other Down River churches and their endeavors as they support us, because they certainly do. All right. It's a busy day. Dorcas Circle meets here in the library at 1 p.m. And then we've also got sessions. Session. There's a special meeting. Not a special. It's a continuation of a meeting from last month of the session, the trustees and the deacons. It's really anybody. But just we're talking about visioning and um, do, just uh, doing some general talking. And then that's from 6 to 7, and then at 7 we'll adjourn that meeting, and then we'll go into a session meeting after that. Uh, so it's a busy night here. So um, there you go. And remember, next it's uh, it, Grief Share is next week. Now, but, but tomorrow there's a big deal here. Um, it's the Friendship Group. Now, I haven't been here since be I got here just before COVID hit. I mean, literally a week weeks before it, but uh, before you had the friendship group that would go out, you know, they would go different places, do things, just people trying to have fellowship. And so they're going to try to kick that off again. And the way that they're going to kick it off is meet at 1130 on Wednesday, um, October 9th. And they'll, that will be in the, uh, uh, well, I'm not sure where it is. I think it's in, I think it's in the, in the parlor. And then uh, they're going to have enjoy lunch. So bring a beverage, I guess, and, and bring something to share. Pizza will be given. And uh, talk about how many people are interested and what are some of the things that they could do. So there you go. All right. Now I'm ready to go over. And there's no fun national days today. I'm sorry to say. In my opinion. <laughs> okay. We'll go over here. And before we do our devotional readings, I'm going to do that silly discipline slash exercise where I, I breathe in for a count of five, hold it for a count of five, and exhale for a count of five. And what I'm doing at that time is I'm just concentrating on trying to get all of the clutter out of my head. I'm trying to center myself and then settle myself down 
so that uh, that I might have a clear landing spot for God's word. And that's what I visualize, really. So if you'd like to, I invite you into this. Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Sorry. I just had to check something. Our opening psalm is Psalm 42. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully, because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O oh, my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Well, thanks be to God. That's a good one for me today. It really helped me to listen, hear those words, feel those words. And um, you can imagine that this guy is in a real pit. And um, one of my friends uh, wrote an article and uh, I read it. Bruce Ray's Chow uh, wrote it, and he talks about empathy. Um, and he says that empathy is the most divine thing that we can do for another. That uh, that is the most sacred thing that we can do is to take on as much as somebody's uh, uh, pain as we can um, to help them through that. So anyway, I just, uh, when I see that and I just see, you know, somebody that feels so alone in the world and, uh, and then we realize that, you know, the greatest thing that we can do to provide them healing is to let them know that they're not alone and give them empathy and that there's a reason why they need to need to keep moving forward all right continue into in Hosea and uh, or Hosea you could say it that way it's Hosea though and it's uh, chapter 7 we're going to read verses 8 through 16 this continuation this is God's um, Oracle, God's complaint against Egypt, uh, I'm sorry, against um, Ephraim, uh, who is making, who is making um, uh, covenants with Egypt and Assyria, so foreign countries, and uh, so, and Ephraim is really the hill country, 
So if you're looking at a map, uh, it would be the hill country would be to the south east of Jerusalem, uh, heading over, uh, heading over towards the Sea of Galilee. All right, let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Ephraim mixes himself with the peoples. Ephraim is a cake, not turned. Foreigners devour his strength, but he does not know it. Gray hairs are sprinkled upon him, but he does not know it. Israel's pride testifies against him, yet they do not return to the Lord their God or seek him for all this. Ephraim has become like a dove, silly and without sense. They call upon Egypt. They go to Assyria. As they go, I will cast my net over them. I will bring them down like birds of prey. I will discipline them according to the report made to their assembly. Woe to them, for they have strayed from me. Destruction to them, for they have rebelled against me. I would redeem them, but they speak lies against me. They do not cry to me from the heart, but they wail upon their beds. They gash themselves for grain and wine. They rebel against me. It was I who trained and strengthened their arms, yet they plot evil against me. They turn to that which does not profit. They have become like a defective bow. Their officials shall fall by the sword because of the rage of their tongues. So much for their babbling in the land of Egypt. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. I think that if we were reading this in the in the context of that time, um, this would be really cool. This would be like uh, uh, you know, a reality show. Um, they're talking about them. They're babbling for the land of Egypt. So they have people that are God's people that have rejected God by what? By interacting, because they were warned not to, interacting with the existing tribes that were there. And it wasn't because they were supposed to shun them. It was because the threat was that they would get in, uh, that they would, that, that um, by intermarrying with that, that they would take on the religions of the other people, or at least that it would start to uh, permeate into their practices. And that's what exactly what happened. So it's become ex- extraordinarily, apparently, grievous down in, in, Ephraim. So uh, here's God calling out those people, right? And it looks like that what they've done is that as God has continued to pull back from them, that um, they sense that God isn't present or they're thinking that God isn't that powerful. They're not thinking that maybe they've made God angry and they should uh, repent and come back, but instead they seek relationships with other countries that are stronger than them to protect them. So that's the that's the complaint. That's what Assyria and Egypt represent. All right. Thank you for letting me take that sip of coffee there. I needed that one. We're going to read Acts. Uh, Acts chapter 23. And uh, we're going to read verses 12 through 24. So uh, this is Paul pretty far along in his ministry, but um, he's back in uh, Jerusalem and he's created a ruckus. So the Romans soldiers have uh, taken him under protective custody, literally, so the people didn't beat him to death. And um, so uh, that's where we leave this. That's where we left this yesterday. So let's pick it up today. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. In the morning, the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then, You and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make a more thorough examination of his case. 
and we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush, so he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, Take this young man to the tribune, for he has something to report to him. So he took him, brought him to the tribune, and said, The prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him uh, by the hand, drew him aside privately, and asked, What is it that you have to report to me? He answered, The Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly into his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than forty of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they kill him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, Tell no one that you have informed me of this. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, Get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with two hundred soldiers, seventy horsemen, and two hundred spearmen. Also provide mounts for Paul to ride and take him safely to Felix, the governor. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So we we kind of think this uh, the tribune. We think a tribune is a group, but it's really it's this is this is one person um, who was uh, the governor. Basically, the uh, I want to be careful because there was a Roman governor Felix, and then there was councils and proconsuls. So, um, but this would be like. Um, Kind of like the lieutenant governor, I guess. I don't know if he was that high, but he was—he wasn't in the military. But the military did what what he, he told them to do anyway. So here he was. He's trying to handle this thing, and he's, and the Jews are saying, uh, "We're going to kill him." Hey, you tell him to bring him back down because we want to inquire into his case. Maybe we could handle this ourselves. You're right. And so, uh, but it, secretly they were going to kill him, and so Paul's sister hears about this. And so she takes her son, so Paul's nephew, and says, go tell Uncle Paul. And he goes and visits him in prison, and then we hear the story from there. So we have, um, we have some plotting against Paul, um, but if they're not going to let Paul die, right, if, if God's not going to let Paul die there, it means that, he must, that God must have another, something else that he wants Paul to do. And I think that that's... When I read this, that's the thing that my next question I start saying, well, what's going to happen here? I know a little bit about what's going to happen. All right. Last one. I'm going to read Luke uh, chapter 7. First 17 verses. So Jesus has been teaching, right? And um, so he's going to go to Capernaum now. Capernaum's on on the on the sea of Galilee, I think, right? So here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion said his friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I, am, I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And those who had been sent returned to the house, 
they found the slave in good health. Soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son. She was a widow, and with her a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the buyer, and the bearer stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them. They glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. I have to tell you, um, if I was ever at a funeral and uh, somebody ever went up to that coffin and touched it and said, rise, <laughs> and the person popped out of it, wow. Fear? Yeah. And then awe. And, and that's that's the fear that we're here. They're in awe, right? And Because uh, you don't know. You're like, how, how could this be? How could this be? So, um, the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother, gave him back. Here's your son, restored and redeemed. Um, They said, uh, after they thanked God, but they said, a great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorably on his people. You know, we could look at that and say that that person who is back from the dead, right? What about him? You know, he could become the center of all this other stuff, and Jesus could be just like the guy. But the attention stays on Jesus, and that's where it has to be. And I think the other thing that we need to think about as we're here is that... Um, if Jesus has this power, right, to set things right, uh, why didn't he do it to all the dead people at the time? Why was it only some? And, and you know, the reason for that is, well, the last sentence here, right? The word about him spread throughout all Judea and the surrounding country. So um, come and see. There's a strong sense of the early ministry of God that says, come and see, come and see. That's what the, that's what the, um, uh, the shepherds uh, did when they were tending their flocks in the night and the angels came and told them of the birth of Jesus. And they ran, they ran down the hills and into the town saying, come and see. So there we go. All right. Now, friends, um, you know, we have, this is such a valuable thing here and uh, that we do here, and it's a community. And uh, Hello, Rich. And um, so as a community, we have to support each other and love each other. Hi, Don and Katie. And um, so I see Joy Yamber. So dear, dear members of the Concord uh, Presbyterian Church, Sue and Jim Anderson, were tragically killed um, last Sunday in an accident. And um, so, dear, dear people, uh, salt of the earth people, um, and uh, so I know that uh, that Concord community is grieving deeply. And so when we, we pray, knowing that they're in the best hands, but we pray for all of you in Concord and all of the family uh, for Jim and Sue Anderson. And if there's anything that we can do, if there's anything that we can do, please let us know. Please let us know. All right.
I think we need to pray. Lord, we come here together. We come here at all different times and places, spaces. But we raise our hearts, our minds, and our souls to you, Lord, in prayer. And, uh, and we come, first of all, acknowledging that we are your beloved children. And that we have a difficult time living up to that. And part of it's because we get pulled away by other shiny objects. But nothing, Lord, nothing can replace you. And the con constant and the consistent affirmation we get of who we are. By being in relation with you and with each other. Lord, without these, uh, these strong chains, we'd be adrift. We'd feel lost. But we still have that feeling time, Lord. And uh, we, we feel that way now. As uh, we hear uh, the news of Jim and Sue Anderson passing. And Lord, that hurts. It especially hurts the uh, Concord Presbyterian Church. So, Lord, we are praying for that church that uh, they will feel the comfort knowing that uh, as terrible as it was that Jim and Sue are in the best place possible and that we, we will see them again. And this gives us comfort. And the comfort gives us hope. And that's what we need. So we ask you to carry the community of uh, Concord through this difficult time. And also all who grieve the loss of the Andersons. And then, Lord, uh, let us know that uh, Jim and Sue served you so well for so many years of their lives. We know that they were welcomed with open arms. And I'm sure they want us to know that they love us and they look forward to when we'll be together again. Lord, above all, comfort us this day. Give us the hope of the resurrection so that we can walk strongly in the face of a stiff wind that opposes us in so many ways but you've given us the strength, especially together. So we continue to pray, and we pray for all who are ill. Pray for their healing. We pray for ourselves. We pray it all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless all. Hey, I love you. God loves you, and we all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. And, um, you know, uh, just give somebody a hug today. It'll help both of you. All right. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day in the Lord. And God willing, and the creek don't rise, I'll be back here with you at 930 tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.